All right. Um, so my name is Leticia, and I'll be here today talking about um, cities in Brazil. They are not in your usual itinerary, but it could appeal to many of your clients. Um, it could appeal to the history lovers, to the architecture lovers, and even to uh, the polygoers, those who would like to experience carnival in a different way than the parade in Rio. Um, all right. So what we're going to cover today, um, I'm going to talk about uh, who we are as Contour Shrovel, um, why you should book through us, and then we're going to go through uh, our main topic, and we're going to give you some question time as well. Okay, so um, Contour Shrovel has been um, introducing travelers to the wonders of Latin America for over 40 years now. Uh, Everything we do um, is tailor-made um, and exclusive, designed for clients. We do have some uh, group escorted tours as well. Um, you can feel confident that your um, uh, and, or your client's itinerary will be designed by specialists, people who've lived there, been there, um, and know a lot about that region. So. Um, Today, uh, we're going to talk about the largest country in Latin America, or at least a small part of it. Um, so, Brazil is the world's fifth largest economy in area and population, and it borders all countries in South America except Chile and Ecuador. Um, it's got 26 states, um, uh, separated by five different regions. Um, the capital city is Brasilia. Um, a city which is um, we're going to talk about today. Um, the language is Portuguese. The population is actually about 230 million people. Um, Australians do need a visa to go to Brazil. Um, that's very important to remember. Um, you usually need to apply um, around 20 days um, in advance before you travel because that's how long it takes uh, for the visa to be granted, so I actually apply before that. Um, and it costs 216 US dollars. You do, uh, clients do need to send their passports to the embassy with an itinerary and uh, a form that can be completed online. Um, Brazil's very famous for Rio Carnival soccer. We had the um, FIFA World Cup recently, uh, the Olympics recently as well. Um, Copacabana Beach, um, the famous Iguazu Falls, a um, huge part of the Amazon jungle, um, lots of wildlife, um, and the drink caipirinha that some people have tried before. Okay, so um, before I go to the next slide, I just would like to show you um, which area we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about the northeast region a little bit, the historical cities, a couple of historical cities in the northeast region. We're going to start with Salvador, Bahia, which is right here, um, and then we're going to talk about Olinda, which nowadays is pretty much a district of uh, Recife, which is up here. Then we're going to go down to um, the southeast, and then we're going to talk about um, states of Minas Gerais and um, a little bit of Rio as so well included, Rio State. Okay, so um, we're going to start with Salvador. Um, for you to get to Salvador, um, you f it's a capital of the state, so it's a main city. You fly from um, Rio or Sao Paulo or like um, many main cities in Brazil, you can fly straight there. Um, and basically, where it's located, this state where it's located, which is Bahia, um, is where the Portuguese first arrived when they got to Brazil um, in 1500. And um, that is, was also the first capital um, of Brazil as well. So um, it's got its colonial part. So basically, Salvador, when it was founded, um, it had um, a, a upper town and a lower town, and then it was built this lift to get both, so people could get 
uh, from one place to the other. So in on its upper town, you can you have Pelourinho, which is the historical region um, of Salvador, the historical part of the town, and um, it's very colorful, um, beautiful colonial um, houses, world um, UNESCO uh, World Heritage Site, um, and with a lot of um, African influences as well um, in that region. Um, it's one of the oldest colonial cities in the Americas and it's located in the Todos Santos Bay. So in Salvador, um, one of the typical dishes is acarajé, which is basically peeled beans um, deep-fried with some um, spice pastes and um, dry prawns. It's delicious. You should try if you're there. Um, it's known for um, capoeira, which is um, it's the, the birthplace for capoeira, which is um, a Brazilian martial art. Um, and people here in Australia practice that as well, so many people like to go to Brazil actually to practice that. Um, and it actually has, um, when I mentioned that carnival in different places besides Rio, um, it's got um, the largest carnival party in Brazil and it's considered one of the largest um, parties in the world. So um, there's a, a, a quite a bit to see there. And I haven't even mentioned um, the beautiful beaches there are. Um, in Salvador and especially the ones just out of town, about an hour or so away, um, you have islands close by too, so um, it's a great destination even if people want a bit of a beach break in Brazil. So um, some of the hotels we have there, um, some people prefer to stay in the historical part, which is uh, Pelourinho. Um, there you're going to find um, beautiful boutique um, hotels. Um, boutique because the, basically the buildings can't be like fully developed but they've been like decorated and been well looked after. Um, such as um, Hotel Pestana Convento do Carmo, which is five stars, the same as Hotel Villa Bahia. Um, in a different part of town uh, where um, not, not far away, um, but if people want to stay a bit closer to the beach, you can um, put them at Hotel um, Zank by Toki, by Toki uh, which is not just in front of the beach, but it's up a hill and you have like beautiful beach views. Um, or a boutique hotel, Aram Yami, um, that then you have like, you're a bit closer to the beach, beautiful pool and um, yeah, great service as well. Okay, so moving um, a little bit um, up north, uh, we're going to Olinda. So as I said before, Olinda um, is nowadays very much a district of uh, Recife, which is the capital of the state of Pernambuco in the northeast of Brazil. Um, you can fly, so to get to Olinda, you're flying to Recife and you're transferred there. Um, you can also fly um, to Recife from like Rio or Sao Paulo um, and other main cities such as Brasilia as well. Um, Olinda was found in 1535 and it was an important main city in that region because um, the, the Portuguese found a lot of sugar cane in that area and um, that was pretty much running the economy in that uh, region. Um, it's very popular uh, for its historical uh, uh, churches and monuments, and um, also very also beautiful beaches close to it. And um, its carnival is another one that is really really famous in Brazil. So, differently than uh, Rio and Salvador. Um, the carnival in Olinda is free of charge, so it's a street carnival, more like the Portuguese used to um, used to celebrate. Um, 
And basically, one of the things that is very uh, unique about Ovinda, sorry about that. Oh, where is that? Okay, great. Um, it, uh, they, these big dolls, so you can see here, um, it's quite a huge lineup, and they're quite large and tall, and that's very typical from um, Olinda and its carnival as well. So um, the accommodation that we have here, the, to stay in the town of, of or the city of Olinda is actually usually going to be more simple, um, your three and a half star accommodation. So if the client wants to um, explore um, the town and things like that, um, you would be looking at something like Hotel Costero or um, Hotel Seven Colinas or Posada San Francisco. But um, not far from Olinda, um, you have amazingly beautiful beaches um, such as Porto de Galinhas, that's okay if you don't remember that word for now, but um, you can have your um, all-inclusive resorts type of experience as well. So when I have that Nanai resort and spa there, it's actually not in Olinda, it's going to be about 50 kilometers away. But it can give you um, another, it's something else for you to add to the itinerary if the client um, is going to visit that uh, that part of the country. Um, okay, so now we're going to move a little bit south. So we talked about Salvador, we talked about Recife. Now we're going to talk about this area here, and you're going to understand why I'm talking about that, because we're actually going to start talking about an, uh, the Royal Road. Um, so you have real estate and Minas Gerais state there. So this is the Royal Road. So basically, um, um, around 1690, um, the Portuguese decided to build a road to take all the gold uh, that they could found in the state of Minas Gerais, nowadays Minas Gerais, to the coast so they could take it back to Portugal. So um, basically, they found a lot of gold, diamonds, and many other precious minerals. And um, they basically love that. So they want to take it um, back to Portugal. Um, so basically you had you have two roads here because you have the original one or the old road and then the, the new way, basically. So the original one would actually start in Parachi and then um, the new uh, way would start in Rio. And then would go all the way up um, across many small towns and things like that, all the way up to this town called Diamantina, which name comes from diamond, um, because they found all these different um, yeah, minerals around that region. Um, the reason why I, wa I want to show you that map is because you can actually, let's say, it's a, it's a way for you to visit um, the historical towns I'm going to talk about now. and. Um, and you can actually do that overland. Okay, so because I mentioned um, the old way would start in Parachi, uh, which is um, a town we talk about in our last webinar. It's actually a beach break from Rio, about three hours from Rio. So let's say if you want to start an overland trip from there, um, you can uh, fly clients into Rio and then transfer them into Parachi even on the same day. Um, it's got quite a few um, islands close by as well if clients want to spend more time. Uh, interesting literature festival happens there. Quite a uh, lovely boutique hotels. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with Parachi. Uh, we talked about that on our last webinar, but feel free to ask questions later on. Um, so from Parachi, going up north, um, you have the towns of um, Tiradentes, or Tiradentes and uh, San Juan del Rey. Um, so Tiradentes was actually a post in the Royal Road because they ended up cre uh, putting many small towns so people could stop while they were on the way from, um, from the gold mines and things like that to the coast. 
Um, but it, they actually ended up finding a lot of gold in Tyrodentis. So um, it's a quite a lovely, um, well-kept um, historical town, um, beautiful churches. Um, and I've even read an article recently, um, uh, someone saying that it's one of the cutest towns in Brazil. Um, so it's got a neighbor town of San Juan del Rey, and um, one thing you cannot miss um, is the actual the the steam train journey from one town to the other. It's quite lovely, um, quite interesting thing to do. In terms of accommodation, you actually have um, some uh, very beautiful hotel, like a, I would say small boutique hotels. You have the ones more in town, which would be um, the Solar, the Ponte, or Posada Oratorio. And you have the ones just out of town, such as Pequena Tiradentes, which the, um, so the whole, it's basically almost, uh, the, what it means is like small Tiradentes. So they created almost a small, like a um, miniature town in the hotel, it's quite beautiful. And you have the Solar de Serra, which is out of town as well, but up on uh, uh, up on a hill, like with beautiful views of the mountains, um, just under you. So uh, clients want a little bit of relaxation in history. Um, definitely recommend uh, visiting that Sierra uh, Ventures and San Juan del Rey. Um, going a little bit north again. Um, we get to Oro Preto. So Oro Preto means black gold and was one of the main cities in the Brazilian gold rush. Um, it's known by its outstanding Baroque architecture, like in lots of churches, um, UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, in fact, all these towns that are in these historical areas I've been talking to you about, they are UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Um, but this city was actually found in the 17th century, and by mid-18th century, it became the most populous city in the New World, or the Americas. Um, the population back then was about 80,000 people, and just for you to have an idea, New York had half of that at that time. So um, it had a huge boom in like um, gold and minerals that were found around there, and it's quite beautiful because, you, as you can see in this photo here, it's uh, amongst mountains, so you have like amazing panoramic views uh, from there. Um, you, you can see here this train journey. Um, it's also got um, a train journey from um, Oro Preto into Mariana. Nowadays they do have um, a carriage all made of glass, quite a beautiful journey for you to do. It's just a day trip um, and you visit the town of Mariana, which is next door as well. Um, so a bit of the gold um, was actually left in town and you can find a lot of that in beautiful, um, in the beautiful churches. So you can see this one, for example, which is the main, um, one of the main churches, not the one, but um, yeah, you can find gold everywhere and it's really beautiful and since it's Baroque with a lot of details and things like that. Um, in terms of accommodation, you have um, Solar do Rosario, which is a beautiful boutique. Um, they, they, are, they are boutique hotels, so we can't really tell like if they are five-star type of thing, but they do take a lot of attention in, um, in to how they, the service is uh, provided to guests, and it's a beautiful place. I've been there myself. Um, same thing with Posada do Mondego. In front of Posada do Mondego, you actually have um, some stalls and like a um, small like street fair type of thing. Uh, where they sell um, handicrafts, and um, it's quite a great location. And you have Solar das Lages, um, which is up on a hill, and you have beautiful views uh, from that area, such as the swimming pool, for example. 
So um, by the time we are in Oro Preto, uh, we are actually getting close to another main city, which is Belo Horizonte. So Oro Preto is actually located um, just about an hour and 15 minutes from Belo Horizonte. And then uh, we're going to start getting out of the historical uh, site um, of this webinar and going to a more modernist one. So Oro Preto was the capital of the Minas Gerais state from 1720 to 1897 when um, the, the new capital, or Belo Horizonte, which means beautiful horizon, um, was designed. So basically, um, it's um, a main city with like 4 million people, so um, they do have um, an international airport, which let's say if you want to uh, clients not to go from Rio and doing all the way through the Royal Road, a good way to fly clients from Rio or Sao Paulo into, or even internationally into Belo Horizonte. Um, and you transfer them, let's say, to Oro Preto Mariana and then to Tiradentes or um, straight to Tiradentes, up to you um, how you can do that. But it's also another way to get to these historical cities. Um, so basically, because it was, it's a new-ish from 1897, um, this city was actually in, um, designed in a very, like, more modernist way. And you have, like, the Pampulia Park, um, which is this where this lagoon is. Um, and around this lagoon, you have some um, interesting um, modernist buildings, such as uh, this church. Um, so this is San Francisco Church, designed by um, architect Oscar Niemeyer. So it's a Brazilian modernist architect. Um, and close, so these are other uh, buildings as well from Oscar Niemeyer. And just outside Belo Horizonte, which is something, let's say, if your client is going to Oro Preto and flying out from Belo Horizonte or something like that, I would include is to go to Inyotin, which is a modern art um, open air museum, uh, really beautiful, um, lots of different exhibitions for clients to enjoy, and then. Um, Let's say they can, after a full day, they can get um, a flight um, um, out of there um, to go to your next destination. So um, in terms of hotels, um, it's more, um, you're going to have more modern hotels, such as Tulipin, Holiday Inn, and Radisson Blue. And now we're going to go to our last um, city we're going to talk about, which is Brasilia. It was founded in 1960, and um, it was uh, was actually built to serve as a capital, such just like Canberra. Um, and it was all in the buildings were designed by that same modernist architect, um, Oscar Niemeyer. So you can um, find um, the um, Alvarado Palace, which is the resident of the presidents. Uh, you can find the Planalto Palace, which is the presidential office. Um, you can also find um, the Monumental Access, which is that area there. And um, it's basically a rectangular lawn surrounded by eight lane avenues, where many government buildings, monuments, and memorials are located. And on Sundays, that is closed for cars, so um, and basically people walk their bikes and things like that. Um, in terms of accommodation, you do have your more five-star um, hotels there, especially because there are many politicians and um, yeah, that go and visit that uh, part of the country. Um, so you have, for example, the Royal Tulip uh, Brasilia Alvarada. You have the Winter Plaza Brasilia Hotel as well. All right. So... Um, if you've attended some of our other webinars before, you know that if you attend five webinars and respond um, the special question, which is that one there, you uh, get a chance to go in um, our 2017 Contours Travel for Mill. So the question is, why was the Royal Road constructed? So if you remember that, 
um, send an email to contours at contourstravel.com.au um, for your chance to go on the Ecuador uh, for meal in 2017. Um, all right, so that was it for uh, historical and modernist cities in Brazil. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. All right. Any questions? All right, thank you very much for attending our webinar and um, hopefully that was helpful for your next itinerary around Brazil. Bye-bye.